Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we're just going to summarize all of the techniques we have for checking whether a series is convergent or divergent. So that's our main question. Is the given series convergent or is the given series divergent? How do we check? Well, we've got a whole bunch of tests that we can apply. Very first thing we should do, however, is always check. Do the terms go to zero? If the terms do not go to zero, as n goes to infinity, then we can definitively say diverges. The series diverges. No question about it. But if the terms go to zero, there's more work to do. For example, the harmonic series is an example where the terms, 1 over n, they go to zero. But this diverges. As on the other hand, the series 1 over n squared, the terms go to zero, but the series converges. So just knowing the terms go to zero is not enough to decide convergence or divergence. We have examples where either one of the cases could happen. So if the terms do go to zero, it just means we have more work to do. And now we've got all of these tests we can apply. But as a very first step, check, do the terms go to zero? If they don't, you're done, diverges. And then all of these other tests, I'm not going to go and describe them in detail because those were all the previous lectures. In this lecture, we're just going to use all of these results as we need them. So let's have a look at the first few examples. In this first example, the very first thing we should do is look at what the terms do. As n goes to infinity, we've got n times sine of 1 over n. So that first thing is going to infinity. The second thing, as n goes to infinity, this is going to 0. So this looks like we're going to have to apply L'Hopital's rule. It's a 0 times infinity type limit. So the best thing to do is write it as a ratio. I'm going to keep the sign upstairs. Move the n downstairs as a 1 over n. Now it's of type 0 over 0. So we could apply L'Hopital's rule in this case. We just have to imagine now instead of taking a limit of the sequence, we're going to take the limit of the underlying function of a real number. Um, another way to think about this, though, is we could just switch the variable to see if we can make things more clear. I'm going to replace that 1 over n with an x in both cases. And so as n goes to infinity, 1 over n goes to 0. So that means x goes to 0. So what I did from here to here was I just replaced 1 over n with the variable x. What's the limit as, n goes to x, as x goes to 0 of sine x over x? That's a very familiar limit. That's equal to 1. You can get this if you want by using L'Hopital's rule, or you can just remember that this was a really important limit we had in differential calculus. So its value is 1. So what does this mean? It means the terms go to 1. The terms do not go to 0. So the series must diverge. So by the test for divergence, the series diverges. Notice it's the test for divergence. What it allows us to do is test whether the series diverges, not whether it converges. If the terms don't go to zero, the series diverges. If the terms do go to zero, there's still more work to do. So how about this next example? Well, I imagine that sine of n, it's, it's either at most 1 or at least negative 1, so it's not really affecting the exponent very much. For large values of n, we're, this is only going to change it by at most a value of 1 or negative 1. Um, so what does that mean? It means, well, if I ignore the sine of n, then it kind of looks like the series 1 over 2 to the n. What is 1 over 2 to the n? That's geometric with a r value of a half, which is smaller than 1. Therefore, it converges. So I would think that this has to converge. So this thing converges. Well, let's try to verify that. And I seem to be thinking that maybe I should compare it with a 1 over 2 to the n, or a geometric series. So can we make that comparison? Well, that exponent in the, num in the, in the uh, denominator, the exponent, n plus sine of n. Well, I'd really like to show that this is smaller than something involving a geometric series. Now, how do I get this inequality to work out? Well, this is on the bottom. So this thing, the denominator, is bigger than 2 to the n minus 1. So when I take the reciprocal, the reciprocal must be less than 1 over 2 to the n minus 1. And now I can say, well, this series, 1 over 2 to the n minus 1, where n goes from 1 to infinity, 
converges. It's geometric with r equals a half. So by comparison, the series that I'm really looking at, its terms are smaller than those of a geometric series. So by comparison, this converges. 2 to the n plus sine of n converges as well. Okay, how about the third one? Well, okay, it's a negative 1 to the n. It's an alternating series. Uh, typically, when I'm looking at alternating series, I kind of want to see, do the negative signs actually make it converge, or did it converge without them? Remember, that's really asking, is this an absolutely convergent series? Do the negative signs actually matter for convergence, or could I get convergence without them? So I want to know, is this absolutely convergent or conditionally convergent? Well, absolute convergence said I would have to look at the corresponding series 1 over n log square root of n. And that, well, log of square root of n is the same as 1 half log n. So this is really like a 1 over n log n series. 1 over n log n. I remember that from the integral test section. 1 over n log n diverged. So this doesn't seem to be absolutely convergent because I can sort of fiddle around with it and make it kind of look like a 1 over n log n series, which diverges. So I don't think this is absolutely convergent, but it could conditionally converge. So that's going to be my claim right now. I'm going to claim it's conditionally convergent. It's convergent because of the negative signs appearing, because it's an alternating series. So how do we get that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to show it's convergent. So this is an alternating series. It's an alternating series with these bn's being 1 over n log root n. Or another way to write that is 2, two times 1 over n log n, because log root n is the same as log of n to the 1 half, where the 1 half can come out front and get moved upstairs as a 2. So these are the bn's. And what do I notice about the bn's? The bn's are decreasing. If I increase the value of n, it's increasing the size of the denominator and therefore decreasing the in terms of the reciprocal. So bn plus 1 is smaller than bn. And what about the limit as n goes to infinity of bn? Well, that's the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 over n log n, which is 0. So both of the conditions that I need to apply the alternating series test apply here. They both are satisfied. So what that means is by the alternating series test, the series negative 1 to the n over n log root n converges. Okay, so the alternating series test tells us it converges. That required that these negative signs be here. We wanted to show it's not absolutely convergent in order to conclude then, therefore, it is conditionally convergent. It's convergent upon the condition that these terms actually do alternate. So how, does, how come it's not absolutely convergent? Well, the series of absolute values of the terms is 1 over n log root n which is the same as the sum of, well, I can bring the 2 outside as 1 over n log n. And this series, 1 over n log n, diverges by the integral test. This was going from n equals 2 to infinity. So you can check that, or you can refer back to the, the lecture on the integral test, where we uh, had a look at something very similar to this, and I left this one, I believe, as an open question there. This diverges by the integral test. So what does it mean? 
Well, the series of absolute values um, diverges, and therefore the original series is not absolutely convergent. The series of absolute values does not converge, therefore we say that the original series is not absolutely convergent. It's convergent, not absolutely convergent, therefore that's what we call conditionally convergent.